linebackers of his era. He's a three-time Pro Bowler, two-time first-team All-Pro over the course of his 15-year career with the Steelers, Seahawks, and Patriots. Please welcome to the breakfast table, Chad Brown. Yes, yes. Good morning, y'all. Hey, what's up? Hey, what? After watching those highlights, good morning, y'all. Yeah. I appreciate you not being so menacing on the table because you were a monster on the field. Now, you, you did it all after you retired. You are, in addition to being an analyst for Pac-12 um, college football, you're now an intern with the 49ers. And now, most guys transition into different things after football. What have you, take, what have you taken from that situation, helping out coach and being an intern with the Niners? The whole internship program is, is really fantastic is what it is you get an opportunity to dive in and this is my fourth internship mm -hmm. wow. and each situation I was in was very different the Seahawks they were coming off that incredible Super Bowl loss to the Patriots the Tennessee Titans 3 and 13 how does Mike Malarkey turn them into a playoff team mm -hmm. and then New York Jets how does Todd Bowles convince a team that everyone says is going to be 0 and 16 yeah. the worst roster in the history of football that they actually have deserved to be in the NFL mm. so I haven't quite figured out what the theme of the 49ers is but right. I think they're definitely going the right direction is yeah. this a full-time gig uh, coaching is something that's on the radar for sure uh, when you are a football junkie like I am there's no better way to experience it than to be inside the lines mm. as a broadcaster you're close, no doubt. But just close enough to yeah. tease you. Yeah. To coach, you're inside the lines. You're in the fight. You're living and dying every Sunday. Mm. I'm already ready to run through a wall for this guy. And I know the 49ers players are probably excited to be playing for you this summer. Now you already did the mini camp sessions. You got a first glimpse at this defense. Not a lot of buzz nationally about the Niners front seven, but I know internally there they're excited. Bosa, D. Ford, Quan Alexander, all these guys. What do you make of this Niners defense now that you've had a first glance at them? Certainly a lot of talent. In that defensive line room, five first-round picks. Literally the most talented room I've ever been in. Remember, I was part of that Steelers linebacker court back in Blitzburg. So, no doubt. Uh, we were pretty good. These guys have a chance to be even better. As far as Nick Bosa, you know, I think the hamstring injury he had in OTA slowed him down a little bit. But his college career, fantastic. You know, play for a great coach at Ohio State, great program. So I think he has what it takes to break, be a great NFL player, but it's fantastic that five first rounders, it's not all on him. It's mm -hmm. not about what he does, it's about what that group does together. And I mm -hmm. think together they're going to present so many issues for offensive lines. You spent some seasons with New England mm -hmm. and Tom Brady, and you finished there when he was just 30 years old. And he was already like a living legend back then. He was having a tremendous career. When you see him play on Sundays now, or you see clips or the Super Bowl parties and the six rings. What do you think of that, knowing him? And how do you connect that with the way you looked at him back then? Is this something that you saw ahead? Uh, I believe it was the uh, great poet LL Cool J. Who said, hey. Hard work pays. Mm -hmm. Hey. And um, Tom has always been the hardest working guy in that organization. He sets the standard for what is the best organization in professional football. So I'm not surprised at all with his continued success, even in the weight room. Tom wasn't moving a whole lot of weight, but he was, there was a lot of sweat flying. He was working very hard. Mm. Not the fastest guy, always competing in conditioning. So his competitive mindset, his desire to be great. Um, I had a key card, like every NFL player has to the facility. And no matter when I showed up, Bill Belichick's car was there and Tom Brady's car was wow. there. Wow. And that's no not matter. just cliche, that's real. That is absolutely real. Even when I left, both their cars were there. So I showed up early as a vet. Yeah. Sometimes I stayed really late getting rehab. Their cars were there. Wow. So the mm. work ethic that that entire organization has is just really an epitome of what Tom Brady is. Hard working, stay late, come in early, get it all done. You've been covering college football the last few seasons. You're one of the main voices on the Pac-12 network. It's late here on the East Coast to watch these Pac-12 games, but I know there's a wide receiver out of Colorado, there's an offensive tackle out of Stanford. Who are some of the guys, if you're an NFL fan, watching Pac-12 football that you're going to know in the league in a couple years? Wow, you mentioned La LaVisca Chenault, the wide receiver from Colorado. That kid is absolutely special. His body is built unique. Tell the audience what his body is. just a huge base, this kid. So most people think of receivers as long and lean. Yeah. There you go over that. there. <laughs> so this guy is built like a giant running back but plays a receiver position. So last year, he was the goal line back for the Colorado Buffalo <laughs> receiver. The receiver taking direct snaps Wildcat. Wow. He's not pitching that thing or handing it off. He's running downhill mm. as a wide receiver. So an incredible skill set, passion for football. And his younger brother just came to see you this last year. So we could have a, a second version of the Chenault. Very mm. cool. Yes. I consider myself pretty fearless. I can jump out of a plane. I'm not scared of many things. I have a paralyzing fear of snakes like paralyzing can't be around them I will freeze mm -hmm. you are an enthusiast 
You call yourself a reptile nerd. We've all seen the photos. It's giving me the ics just thinking about it with all due respect. I'm gonna give you an opportunity here to convince me that snakes are not the worst thing on planet Earth. Wow, wow, okay, that's a, that's a, <laughs> a tall hill to climb. You know, a lot of people have a reptile phobia, uh -huh. and we are taught that. As, as children, if you put a spider in front of a baby and you put a snake in front of a not baby. Not afraid of spiders. Most babies are gonna be afraid of spiders. Most babies are not gonna be afraid of snakes. So someone oh, taught you this, wow. this phobia of snakes. But clearly out in the natural world, snakes serve a vital role. Rodent populations would like destroy the earth if there was not snakes. So just think about <laughs> that. that as, as a well. person who lives in New York well, City, I'm sure you hate rats. Yeah. I know you hate you're rats. wearing them yeah. like necklaces. What, I mean, that's not okay. She got rats in the building, fam. Yeah. <laughs> Get some snakes up in there. I have an appreciation for reptiles in the natural world, and I really have an appreciation for what they do. As someone who has bred and sold reptiles as pets, they bring you closer to nature. Dogs and cats. They don't necessarily bring in closer to nature. You enjoy them as a pet. That's true. But if you buy a, a reptile, where did it come from? Wow, this animal comes from Borneo. Where is Borneo on the map? What's going on in Borneo? Oh, they're, they're, cutting down, they're cutting down the rainforest for palm oil plantations. So now you become tied to the Chat. natural history of this animal. I'm Googling this. You got to become Borneo? one with the earth. Borneo. Is All that right. a country? It's an island in uh, yeah. Indonesia or right. in, in South Africa. I just booked a trip. All right. Yeah. So, so this past weekend, you hosted a, a camp at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, and you've been doing this for nearly 20 years. Uh, why is it important for you to give back still after all these years? These, these camps are a great opportunity for kids to expand their, their vision of what their dreams can be. And I always tell the kids, I was once just like you, and I literally mean that. I went to a football camp in Pasadena mm -hmm. when I was a kid. So that opportunity to touch an NFL player, yeah. have him coach you up, have him tell how well you just did in the drill. We're building confidence, mm. we're expanding dreams, and then the last couple of years, my message has been, I'm next. Yeah. Who's next? I'm next. Mm. And for a guy like uh, Marvell Tell, a guy who went to my camp, was just drafted by the Indianapolis Colts, awesome. to show him to the kids, mm. it wasn't 20 years ago or 30 right. years ago like it was for me. It was literally four or five years ago he was at this camp. Wow. And now he's an NFL draft choice. And now we've got a couple other guys who are going to be seniors in college who have the opportunity to be drafted. So in the next three or four years, I'll have four or five guys who were in the NFL who were once campers awesome. at the camp and say, you know, who's next? I'm, I'm next. next. Feeling just like these guys. I That's love awesome, it. man. We appreciate you, man. Thank you so much Thanks for joining us.